Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you this case of a patient with a corneal scar as well as a small pupil and an average density of a cataract. And so you're going to be able to see that I don't need any iris retractors, hooks, pupil expansion devices. I don't need to use tripan blue. Again, with the corneal scar and a small pupil, I'm able to still perform mechanical fracturing techniques, double chop, cross chop, because I know I can place my instruments within the bag, underneath the anterior capsular rexus edge, and use mechanical fracturing forces to disassemble the lens. I'm using a corneal marker to help me center and size my rexus. You can see there's haze on the cornea on the central and right side of the screen. I'm gonna make my paracentesis incisions first on the right side, which is superiorly, and then on the left side, which is inferiorly. I'm making sure I have a nice corneal shelf, which will allow me to make a self-sealing corneal incision. I'm injecting some intracameral lidocaine and then intracameral epinephrine. The epinephrine did not help dilate the pupil. And then I injected some dispersive viscoelastic to open up the pupil. And then I'm doing my triplanar corneal incision. I make a vertical groove, place the blade into the deep part of the groove, tunnel through the cornea, and then enter. I use the canyon to help control the eye for this maneuver. And this is my capsular rexus technique using the forceps to puncture the central anterior capsule, pull centrally. And then I'm going to grab on the right side of the capsule to create a flap. I'm going around circumferentially. And I want to be a little bit larger than the pupil size here because this is a, somewhat of a small pupil. I'm going to burp some viscoelastic out. This is the capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. I'm placing the cannula underneath the anterior capsule edge, contraincisionally, into the capsular fornix, point the tip down, get a nice fluid wave, point the tip back horizontally, decompress on the left side. I'm able to spin the lens and then spin the lens on the right side, pointing it down. This technique does not require direct visualization and you get a nice fluid wave every single time. I'm irrigating the surface of the cornea, turning the sleeve to make it the right size for the chop technique. Lift the incision with the chopper, go in with irrigation off to minimize decimates trauma. I'm going to remove the surface epinuca material and then begin the double chop. Place the chopper underneath the anterior capsular rexus edge into the fornix. Turn the figure to vertically subincisionally. Bring both instruments together, crush the lens, and bisect the lens in half. Place the chopper out to the contralateral right hemineucleus. Pull it centrally, crushing it against the figure tip, and that has divided the right hemineucleus. I lift the first quadrant using high vacuum, pulling it up out of the bag, and then placing the chopper around the lens, crushing the lens into smaller pieces, and then emulsifying. I place the chopper around the second quadrant here, and then crushing it against the figure tip, pulling up the lens piece with high vacuum, and then emulsifying the lens pieces. There's a little bit of remnant of that second quadrant now. I'm placing the chopper out to the equator, pulling the lens piece up, and then using high vacuum to remove the lens pieces. I'm gently rotating the second hemineucleus in front of me, place the chopper out to the equator, place the figure tip deep in the bag, crushing the lens completely in half, creating the third and fourth quadrant. I'm placing the chopper around the third quadrant here. And then I crush the lens piece against the figure tip. You can see the third quadrant was mobilized and now into smaller pieces and I'm emulsifying the lens pieces. This is the fourth quadrant, placing the chopper out to the equator, pulling it centrally, crushing the lens piece against the phaco tip, and then emulsifying the lens pieces. So all of the endonucleus out now. Again, this is a fairly soft lens. 
So at this point, I'm trying to encourage the epinucleus to come forward. So I placed a chopper around the epinucleus, pulled it centrally, and it was able to prolapse upward. Grabbing the anterior edge of the epinucleus here as well, and it's able to pull the epinucleus up. Notice as I go after the epinucleus on the left side, I use a chopper to pull back on the iris edge so that I don't grab the iris accidentally. I'm teasing the subincisional epinucleus from the posterior aspect, lifting that epinucleus up, and it was able to come out nicely. I take the chopper out, push BSS in, take the finger tip out, switch it with the INA handpiece. The sleeve is actually pushed up a little bit towards the tip, and so I'm going to retract the sleeve a little bit. I start subincisionally and sweep side to side, grasping the anterior component of the cortical material, peeling it off and going around circumferentially using high vacuum. The polymer tip is real nice in this situation because I don't have very good visibility underneath the pupil edge here. But I'm using foot pedal control to carefully modulate how much vacuum I'm using in this situation. Once the bag is completely clean of the cortex, I switch to the polish mode just to polish underneath the anterior capsular rexus edge and then polish the posterior capsule surface here. I'm going in with the BSS cannula, going into the subincisional space and pulsing some BSS into the capsular fornix subincisionally. I'm injecting some cohesive viscoelastic to inflate the capsular bag and anterior chamber. This patient actually has a high powered lens. And as a result, I'm going to widen the incision a little bit. I'm injecting the single piece acrylic intraocular lens into the capsular bag, making sure that I'm tilting the leading edge so that it goes into the capsular bag. Now I'm quickly gonna go in and inflate the eye and tap the lens, making sure that it's in the bag, and then using the Maltzman to ensure that both haptics are in the bag. I retract the pupil there. I can tell the lens is clearly within the bag. I go underneath the lens, tilting it and rotating it 90 degrees with the help of the Maltzman. And by doing so, I'm ensuring that the trailing haptic is also within the bag. So I move all the viscoelastic from within the bag. I'm tapping the lens, making sure there's no viscoelastic. I'm gently going around circumferentially and then switching to visco mode, removing all the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. And I like to hold the Maltzman in place in case the IA tries to snag the iris. I have the Maltzman there to help control the pupil. But the Maltzman is really nice. It gives me excellent control. I can retract the pupil edge, and making sure that the entire lens is in the bag. I push BSS to pulse into the angle. Before I take the INA handpiece out, I stop the continuous irrigation, take the tip out, and then I hydrate my incisions. So again, this is a patient with a corneal scar as well as small pupil. This is an average lens density, but you can see this was no problem. I was able to perform double chop, cross chop, mechanical fracturing techniques, crushing the lens piece within the bag, pulling lens pieces up out of the bag, maintaining the finger tip in the central safe zone. And this is really a very routine case. I don't need tripan blue. I don't need hooks. I don't need rings. And this technique really is, in my opinion, the most versatile way to perform cataract surgery. You're not dependent upon direct visualization. You're not dependent upon high vacuum to hold the lens pieces or to emulsify the lens pieces. 
you use mechanical fracturing, which is a very safe way to do cataract surgery. So I hope this was helpful to you, and I thank you for your attention.